It's gonna make your blood boil. Put them on full mass. You see, there's a college student, a college student in Los Angeles named Judah Atkins, a USC student. Mr. Atkins was charged with a violent crime, but he never committed it. He did not do it. The legal system also found him completely innocent. He didn't do it. Everybody is unanimous. He did not do it. You have the right of innocence in a court of law. His innocence was upheld. He was innocent the entire time is my point, okay? USC, however, suspended him pending these allegations that he was innocent of. Once vindicated in the judiciary, they decided to still enforce the suspension of Judah Atkins. Let me give you background that he was falsely charged for. According to LAPD officers, there's a police report at roughly 9.30 p.m. On the night of April 9th, 2022, an armed robbery took place in a parking lot off of the Olive Street in downtown LA, roughly 2.5 miles northeast of USC's University Park campus. Two individuals held a couple of uh, a couple at gunpoint as their car was ransacked. That's a hell of a crime, right? After the suspects drove off with the stolen items, LAPD were eventually able to locate a car matching the description given by the couple on West 35th Street, just across the street from USC. Atkins was never involved in the crime at all. At the time of the initial crime, young Mr. Atkins was in attendance at the SC Choreographic Showcase. That's at Bing Theater near the center of USC's campus, evidenced by an electronic ticket receipt. He went to a small group or went with a small group to support a friend who was part of the performance. A little after this time, Mr. Atkins explained that he noticed the growing sound of sirens and a helicopter. Officers eventually arrived at Atkins' location on Catalina Street, a couple streets over from where the suspect's vehicle was found. There's more. Quote, I tried explaining that I was a USC student simply walking home. But I had no human response from any of these officers, Atkins said. He was arrested at 1.50 a.m. the morning of April 30th by three LAPD officers. No body camera footage was ever released to the public or to his family. According to his arrest record, Atkins was charged with two felonies, aggravated robbery and the use of a firearm during the crime. These charges were the complete antithesis to who Atkins was. A star student, a record that doesn't exist, no criminal record at all. While in custody, he explained that he was treated like a dog with phone calls and shoes withheld for four days and meals that were burnt to the point of being inedible while being in a cell designed to torture the claustrophobic 24 seven. As day by day went on, I started to get more and more depressed and suicidal, he explained. You're literally in a stone room with bars, one toilet, and 20 other guys. After four days, Atkins was allowed outside contact and called those close to him, including Tomas Mania, a current junior studying quantitative biology. You see, Tomas was a good friend and had been a member of the group that Mr. Atkins attended the SC choreography showcase. The, uh, with the night of his arrest, according to what transpired or after he explained it, his friend 
Tomas called the then Dean of Student Affairs, that is your advocate of any college, allegedly, supposedly, as well as officials within the Department of Public Safety at USC in order to try and figure out what role the school could play in aiding the young student, Mr. Atkins, whether that be legal, financial, psychological, something. His efforts fell on deaf ears. According to court records, the bail was $150,000 after he was finally arraigned. He was arraigned on May 2nd, 2022. Two days later, Judah's father, Eric Atkins, was notified by USC via email that his son had been indefinitely suspended from the university. Unfortunately, Atkins would remain detained between Los Angeles County facilities for nearly two weeks for something he never did. There's more. After two miserable, restless, and stressful weeks, Atkins was released on his own recognizance on May 11th. I, I want you to, I, I, before I finish this statement, I want you to understand what that means. That means a judge looked at the case. A judge looked at evidence presented. The bond was $150,000 initially. They released him on a signature. I don't know anyone who has ever been accused of armed robbery getting released on their recognizance or a signature. We call that a signature bond. In other words, the judge knew good and damn well this man did not commit robbery. You don't release a robber on a signature. There's more. Court sanctioned pretrial supervision meant that the student had to wear an ankle monitor at all times and he wasn't to leave the area specified by supervision. He was to report back to his preliminary hearing five days later. Upon release from jail on May 11th, Atkins was immediately directed by USC to remove his belongings from his dorm at Kale and Arani Residential College. Escorted by DPS officers and a residential advisor in the middle of the day in front of all. Let me give you the negative impact. Uh, between jail time and USC's uh, suspension, Atkins had missed his last few weeks of freshman year, including all of his finals. He describes how the university never offered any academic compensation for his lost time. Additionally, Atkins was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder at Silver State Health Services in Las Vegas soon after his release with symptoms including sleep disturbances, hypervigilance, flashbacks, increased anxiety. So let's talk about efforts to overturn and clear this man, to overturn this suspension. So on June 6, 2022, after a month of the young student, Mr. Atkins' arrest, and more than two weeks after his final release from jail, the student suspension appeal was rejected following review. It wouldn't be until weeks into the fall 2022 semester that USC would reach out to the students affected, including both his friend Tomas and Atkins. There was, however, an effort from one faculty member, Assistant Vice Provost of Student Affairs, Darren Muko, who tried to help Atkins reintegrate into student life and aid in providing mental health resources. But according to Atkins, it seems like he may have been the only one. So the Annenberg Media submitted questions to USC and the university declined an interview request, but sent the following statement. The university is deeply committed to the well-being of every student and does all it can to supply its policies, to apply its policies in a compassionate and thoughtful manner. While we cannot discuss the specifics of individual cases due to federal stu student privacy laws, we believe the university acted appropriately in this matter based on the information available at the time. Interim action safety measures may be applied while we gather more information and they are often modified or released 
as additional information comes to light. But where's the modification? Where's the modification? He has been adjudicated, found to be actually innocent, both legally, ethically, morally, realistically, practically. What's the update? There is none, according to Atkins. So based on information that you knew at the time, I really, I want to address that for a moment. As a university professor, I'd be damned if I believe a police report of a student that I know. That's not evidence. A judge won't even allow a police report to be part of prosecuting an individual inside of the court of law. It is dismissed as hearsay because they don't trust cops either. But you tell me that the police report was enough? For you to do all of this to this young man, no consultation, no talking, nothing. Put it up. The friends of Judah Atkins, they have organized a GoFundMe for him so he could find his financial footing once again. This is totally, totally turned his life upside down. You can go to the GoFundMe. I encourage you to do so. I will be doing so myself today. Help Judah after his wrongful arrest by LAPD. You can find it on GoFundMe. I want to thank, and let's keep that GoFundMe up. I want to thank, we want to thank uh, Daphne uh, Yaman of, An- of Annenberg Media for her reporting on this story. And a member of our team, Benjamin Papp for bringing this story to our attention. Let's put them up. Thank you both for bringing this story to our attention. All right, Um, so I'm going to say this uh, to the leadership of the university. And, And let's make sure that in post we put up the president Uh, And also the provost of the university put up their pictures. Make sure people know exactly who they are. Buck stops with them. They are able to override these decisions made by middle management of any university. Um, This is an opportunity for you to get it right. Okay. This is an opportunity for you to get it right. You don't know me. and I don't know you. But I promise you this is not the way to meet me. Get it right, it will be over with. Everybody will do an update on the story. And the young man gets to continue his academic study. All right, Jackson, thoughts here? Well, I think it's important for everybody to continue to push this story because I think it's one that will, and not just can, but will catch on because everybody can and should be sued. Sue the police department, the city, the school, because it's clear, one, there's just a, a, a lot of ire to, to, to sadistically hurt this kid. And then also on the university's part, um, they just were like, oh, I'll get rid of it. You know, that, that's all they did. That, that, that's how they handled it. Um, so many liabilities everywhere. This situation was handled so poorly that, as you pointed out, this how could this not have flipped his life completely upside down? Right. Who's ever really um, prepared to deal with something like this? But especially when you're that young and you haven't even really perhaps yet had to deal with challenges in your career or, you know, different types of hurdles that maybe you face as you get a little older. Um, but now he's got all this baggage that he's going to have to carry around with him for the rest of his life. Um, so again, I hope that uh, he can sue and win as big as possible because uh, I yeah. think this is a story that people can really uh, can really feel for. Yeah, uh, and the thing is, as you know, Jackson, uh, he was a victim of the justice system, a completely innocent man caught up in a whirlwind of incompetence and likely bias. And then he gets victimized further by his own institution that he's paying to obtain an academic education. And then when he's adjudicated as actually innocent, they don't even update their ruling based on charges that have been completely dismissed. 